Igor, over to you, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Stephen, special thanks to Thierry de Montbrial because this is an excellent opportunity for the Russians to pronounce what they think about the global governance, which is the enigmatic thing for most of us. Uh, uh, looking at Trump from this Soviet Russian retrospective, I would say that uh, there could be two options. First, this is a cyclical Trump. By this I mean that for the Soviets, the change from Carter to Nixon was the similar thing, even worse. Or for example, from Kennedy to Nixon. So for, for, for us, it's sort of a cyclical thing when uh, this great nation changes course because social justice versus economic efficiency one, one wins or loses. And he symbolizes at the moment, as our American colleague said, this boost for the economic efficiency of the, of the uh, ruling class. Uh, so, as Paul Kennedy said once in his famous book, The Rise and the Fall of the Superpowers, that could be the rise of the United States or that could be a fall of the United States easily because the United States can overextend itself. And it looks like uh, protectionism, demagoguery, and populism could overextend the United States. This, uh, we, we were talking about trade wars. We all know that protectionism has its limits. It will backfire on demand and supply and chain sooner or later. This war with China has its limits, and so on and so forth. So from this point of view, I think that uh, I'm on the side of those who think that uh, uh, American people will give its answers to all these questions by their own history, institutions, tradition, and uh, they will uh, uh, temper the, 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 the president. This obsession can be, Trump obsession can be cured by American history and uh, institutions. Uh, for, for the Russians, uh, Trump is a great catalyzer uh, of the creation of the bipolar world, or the return to the bipolar world, authoritarianism versus liberalism. Uh, if at the beginning of, uh, uh, of this century, we had uh, uh, a naive uh, ideas and hopes that Russia will join European family, as one of the members, now it's, it's over. Uh, we, we are pushed into the uh, natural or unnatural alliance uh, dash marriage with, uh, with our great uh, partner China uh, and with other authoritarian regimes like Turkey, like uh, South America, like uh, Vietnam, uh, and so on and so forth. So from this point of view, he catalyzed the creation of bipolar world but in a way, it's more balanced international system, which we know how to handle. We do remember this bipolar world, which managed to create Helsinki agreements, which managed to do many other things. Because we are, by definition, cannot be all liberals. By definition, certain nations cannot be the nations of the rule of law, democracy, liberal democracy, open market, and so on and so forth. By definition, through historical stage, at the moment, we are much closer to China than, than to Europe. And he catalyzed by his behavior this thing. Good question on which side of the equation he is. And this question was raised many times here. And from this point of view, he will, of course, uh, bring some kind of a disbalance. Uh, I don't want to, to, to deal with the personal questions because uh, so many things were said or, or rather not said by Mr. Mueller and, and, and the whole of the group which uh, uh, explores the possibilities on, or investigates how Mr. Putin manipulates Mr. Trump. We'll see it soon. They will meet in, in Paris and then they will meet next year in, in Washington. And if Trump is manipulated by Putin, American people will see that. Uh, I have my doubts that uh, we are so powerful. Never were. But uh, from the point of view of people gathered here at this room, I think we, we, we can go back to the uh, global governance as, as the question what to do in this situation of bipolarity, 
big question marks, a lot of uncertainties, and so on and so forth. So for me, uh, uh, from mid to long term, we have different questions and different challenges. We know that four billion people very soon will have problems having fresh water. We know that about 11 big cities, megapolises of, of this world, in, in 10 years' time will, have, uh, will run out of this fresh water. We know that uh, around three trillion dollars is uh, 30, 30, excuse me, trillion dollars is hidden in the in the in the offshore uh, jurisprudences and is not used for the betterment of, of where we live, for the commodities and services we need. So we have to talk about very good global governance. And while big people fight at these lunches, Xi Jinping, Putin, poisoning Trump, and versa versa. We have to think about what do we do, middle-sized countries, uh, in good integrations like European Union, uh, other integrations. What do we do with this global governance? Where do we go forward from here? Because we're, we're ex extinguishing the civilization we're living in. So from this point of view, I think that uh, new enlightenment, new convergence of religion and science, new recipes for the convergence of this economic efficiency and social justice of, of communism and socialism, if you want, uh, and capitalism. That, those are the questions which the, the gathering like this has to be much more occupied with than uh, this particular very difficult stage of the existence of Trump as the leader of the free world. I would stop here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Спасибо большое.